We a little a little late today. It's a little bit though. It's a little bit. We got it. We got it on point on Thursdays. I mean on Tuesday. Now we do it on Thursdays too. And that changes the game. That changes the game. Listen, a little late today, but it's all good. This is our first time doing a Thursday podcast. We doing that from now on. Matter of fact, let's start now. Yeah, 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 yeah. We back. This is the first time we're doing Victory Talk on a Thursday. We're doing it twice a week now. We're not playing games out here twice. I wanted to slowly ramp up, right, to make sure it was something that I could adhere to. In fact, in fact, when we first had the idea to do two podcasts a week live for like two months, I told Nima, hey, we're thinking about it. So what I did was... I planned my life as if there was a podcast on Thursday to see how it would work. And uh, we did that with varying degrees of success. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, we, 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 we decided to go for it, man. So it's going to be two days a week. All right. It's going to be every Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's live. It's live. Unless, of course, you're watching this in the future. <laughs> you missed it. You late. You late. Everyone else is watching it live like a G. You know what it is. Listen, we got a lot we want to cover today. We're going to talk about how you can get ahead, ahead of life, ahead in life and ahead of other men. Get in that top 1% or at least closer to it. Got a lot of stuff to cover today. A lot of stuff to cover today. We're going to be answering super chats. And as always, all your super chats go towards research and development of our upcoming product, Thought repellent. Yeah, man. Listen, we got a free Discord. In that Discord, there's free courses. We're helping people learn how to make money. We're helping people learn how to trade. I got free, I got a bunch of free courses in there. There's a lot of free advice. We in there helping people. It's a it's a it's a you might you might call it a gang of like 12,000 people <laughs> all helping each other, man, helping us all rise up the ranks. Of mediocrity and it's all about building your muscle your money muscle and mindset now once you do that hoes gonna be all over you and they're gonna be trying to hold you back man that's why you need thought repellent look this we got a logo right here let me see yeah the logo you see that's a thought and it says no no mas chicas no mas chicas por favor no mas chicas por favor now Nima, we've been working on this for a while. It's 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 almost. I mean, we've been working for more than a year. On more this, than a year. But we exposed it to the public. Yeah, uh, like a couple of months ago, four yeah. or five months. Well, ago. you you could say I've been working on it my whole life. <laughs> you know yes, yeah. <laughs> I had the exposure to this yeah. R and D to be participating. Yeah, in yeah. So like, we got nerds in labs with beakers and shit, mixing up shit, trying to figure out the best uh, formula. For thought repellent, and that shit costs money, man. Research and development. So all all your super chats go towards the research and development for thought repellent, right? And it's for you. You're donating to yourself. You're donating to yourself. I hit a wrong button right there, but it's all good. Don't worry about it. Listen, don't you worry. <laughs> don't you worry. Don't you worry. Awesome, man. We are here. It's not as many people watching yet because they ain't used to a Thursday podcast. But oh, they gonna they gonna get used to it. They gonna get used to it. Uh, is my man is uh the homie in here today, man? The dude who was asking the question about the thing, blackjack, blackjack mastery. Is he here? Let's if he ain't here, listen, blackjack. You asked me a question last week, and I I couldn't answer it. First time I've been stumped ever, and now I got it. If he ain't there, don't don't worry about it. We are gonna get it. All right, listen. I got some stuff I want to get into. Stuff I want to stuff I want to help y'all with, and uh, 
one of the main parts, the most important things when it comes to becoming a 1% man, crushing weakness, you got to build strong habits. That's why we have a whole segment called Habits of a Winner. Some funny happens. Some funny happens every time we do that intro. <laughs> but I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> I can't tell you what it is. All right. So if you've been watching me for any amount of time, you know that I'm a shot calling balling. If you've been watching me for any amount of time, you know that I'm a baller. Some mics even say a shot caller. Right? I'm consistently stunting on the haters and flexing on the hoes. I've built several multi, now eight figure businesses. Right. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time. And when it comes to building your business, I have three secrets that I want to share with you that have really helped me make a lot of money, helped me make millions. And I'd like to share those with you so you can have a higher likelihood of success if you're in business or if you're looking to go into business. Um. You ignore these three things, you will fail. Make no mistake. 80% of businesses fail, and you're going to be one of them. You're going to be one of them if you ignore these three rules that I'm about to break down for you. All right. <clears throat> now, oh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Number one. When it comes to marketing or selling your product or service, you need to understand that the decisions people make is are the decisions people make are based off the emotions they feel at the time they make the decision. What I mean by that is, for example, one of I'm gonna give you an example. One of my friends that I grew up with, good friends, he's doing life in prison, right? Because he killed two people, right? But he was in a different kind of emotional state, right? He was mad and angry when he did that. He wouldn't have killed those people if he was in a good mood, right? And that's how customers behave as well. For example, we've all bought things that maybe we didn't want to buy or maybe we regretted buying, but we were so excited at the time of purchase. But if you would have gave yourself some time to calm down maybe you wouldn't have bought it or maybe we should have bought something and we were scared to buy it so we didn't we that emotion prevented us from making the purchase and then we later regretted it right so our judgment our emotions play a huge role in our decision making see most people think that they're rational logical decision makers but that's not the truth. The truth is you make an emotional decision. All people make the emotional decisions and they use logic to rationalize it. That might have been how a lot of you guys were born. Right. Your dad saw your mom and he didn't really want to do it. But, you know, he was. <laughs> he was lonely or he was lonely and or horny. And he said, ah, I got some time to kill. <laughs> Nine months later, you came. And now look at you. You're watching YouTube videos about how to build your business. Sometimes things just work out the way they're supposed to. But I'm going to explain something to you. There's different regions of the brain. All right. There's, you see it? You got it? Are we, yeah, we over here. Yeah, we good. There's different regions of the brain. There's the neocortex, right? This is where rational thinking takes place. Then there's the limbic brain. This is where emotions and feelings are, are produced. And then you have what's called the reptilian brain. This is basically just biological functions. So you don't have to think about breathing. Automatic shit, you know? You, it's hot, your body sweats. Shit you don't really have to think about. It happens on autopilot. Now, 
humans. Now, a lot of mistakes I see entrepreneurs make is they try to get people to buy by appealing to their neocortex. Let me explain what I mean. So what they'll do is, oh, okay. What they do is they'll talk about all their pro, uh, their products, everything their product can do, right? They'll be like, oh man, they'll talk about the features, right? They'll talk about the features of the product, like everything that the product can do for you and how much and maybe they'll talk about how they'll save money by it. They'll basically try to use logic. They'll try to use logic in order to sell their products, right? And it makes sense if you think about it. But what you want to do is you want to appeal to the you want to appeal to this part of the brain because this part of the brain is actually where the decisions are going to come from. Sorry, I, I, you know, that was me. That was my fault. <laughs> All right. So you want instead of talking about the features of your product or service, you want to only talk about the benefits. Or if you're going to talk about the features, you got to give the benefits of it. Right. And this is going. To cause the person Who's, who's listening to you, this is going to cause your customers to feel what? Emotion. Right? And you can do this with, with any product or service, right? So, for example, when I do this thing with the screen where I am able to draw, I use my iPad, right? But that's just a feature. A feature is a, of my iPad is that I have this pen that I can draw. The benefit is I can get my points across to you a little better, right? And that makes me feel better, right? The benefits, right? For example, you can do this with any product. So a lot of times people will talk about, um, for example, when I was in the supplement industry, I used to see a lot of different supplement lines talking about how much um I would, I would see a lot of supplement line i would see i would see a lot of different supplements and they would brag about the amount of ingredients in each product right but instead of doing that i just talked about what those ingredients would do for you for example in pre-workout one supplement is called citrulline right and i'd see other brands saying we have eight grams of citrulline per serving right but the prospect doesn't really give a fuck about that, right? What they give a fuck about is what that citrulline will do for them, right? So instead of saying, oh, we have eight grams of citrulline, if I did say that, I made sure I was saying, and that's going to help you get a better pump because it's going to increase blood flow because it's going to increase blood flow to your muscles, helping you get a better pump, a shirt busting explosive pump each workout. You know what I'm saying? Like, which, which one sounds more appealing if I just use logic? Hey, we have more citrulline than any other pre-workout. Or this pre-workout will help you get the biggest pump out of anyone in the gym ever. Pause. What's going to what's What's more? Which one do you want? <laughs> which one do you want? Right now, a lot of you got a lot of you guys may be saying if you're like stupid. <laughs> You're saying, I don't make decisions off emotions. I make decisions off of logic, right? And mm. it's okay. That's your ignorance speaking. You know, you don't know. And it's all right. I'm here to teach. <laughs> you want to believe that. I used to want to believe that. But the more you look at life, the more you understand that it's your emotions control your decision making almost 100%, right? And that's why I always talk about in my videos, learning how to control your emotions, because if you cannot control your emotions, you cannot control your decisions. And if you can't control your decisions, you're a liability to yourself and others.
hope you guys are getting this shit. Hope you guys are understanding what I'm saying, right? So the key is when you're marketing your products or service is that you want to talk about, you want to focus with the right one. You want to, you don't want to focus on the features, right? You want to focus on the benefits, right? So don't talk about how good your product is. Talk about the things that your product can do for the customer. You get what I'm saying? Like I hired Nima to edit these videos and film this podcast because he he was gonna he makes good videos that I can put out and I don't have to do anything, right? <laughs> so like I can trust that my videos are gonna come out looking good and I won't have to think about them after I'm done yelling at the camera. Right. So that takes a lot of stress off of me. <laughs> but I didn't fucking ask him what degree he went, what degree he has or how long he's been doing it. I just said, man, can he give me this feeling of relaxation <laughs> and, and and take away any stress I had around making videos? Right. And he gets paid top dollar for that. You heard? Blackjack's back. All right. We're going to holler at him, man. We're going to holler at Blackjack. <laughs> that's one that's one focus that's one remember the decisions people make are based off the emotions they feel at the time they make the decision right and the important part of that is emotions can change right if you've ever dated a woman then you know that they can change at the drop of a hat <laughs> they can change on a fucking dime <laughs> So if you are in sales at all, it's super imperative that you should get the sale when you're on the call with the person. If you can, right? Don't force you. You can't force them to do it, and you you don't want to pressure them too much into do it. But you want to get them to can. You don't want to. You don't want to pressure them into do it. You want to help them feel the emotion that will allow them to make the purchase, right? Because one emotion that may be stopping them from making the purchase is fear. Right. And that fear can be rational. That fear can be irrational. You get what I'm saying? It's. It's important if you are a salesperson to get even if they say, hey, I'll do it later <laughs> and they mean it. Right. They might really mean it. A lot of times they mean it when they said it. However. Later on that day, probably after he talked to some girl. He didn't want to do it anymore, right? Because his emotions changed, right? When he was all excited and ready to go, he would have did it. But then later his emotions changed, right? Maybe fear crept in, right? And then he doesn't want to do it anymore, right? So you always got to remember that your job as a marketer or a salesperson is... <laughs> Careful how I word this... <laughs> It's not necessarily manipulating emotions. Or is it? Maybe it is. <laughs> Maybe it is, bro. <laughs> but fuck it. <laughs> That's how the economy works, man. Maybe, maybe I just got to tell you the truth. <laughs> but if you look at the definition of the word manipulate, it doesn't, it's not necessarily a bad thing. For example, let's look it up. Don't, don't show my screen yet because I'm going to misspell it. <laughs> Manipulate, to handle or control. To con Okay, you can show the screen now. Manipulate, to handle or control, or control or influence a person or situation. Hey, that doesn't necessarily mean negativity, right? It's, it's, just, it's just influence, right? It's just influence. You wouldn't have been here. You wouldn't have been born if your mom didn't start manipulating your daddy's <laughs> genitalia, right? It's not a bad thing, right? You wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for it. It's okay. <laughs> Last time I was at the strip club with my girlfriends, saying that so she can't get mad at me, she was there. She was there. 
and the and the and the stripper started manipulating. <laughs> the stripper started shaking that ass on her. She was manipulating my girlfriend to give her dollars. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Everybody, everybody left happy. Everyone left happy. All right. <laughs> All right, number two. <laughs> you have to focus. Oh, number two. You can't be everything to everyone. You have to pick a target market and only focus on them, right? This is super important because <laughs> this is super important. Um, let me let me show let me show you why, right? A lot of times when people start a business, I ask, who are you marketing this to? Who's your product for? And sometimes they'll say some dumb shit like everybody, everybody can buy it. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, but can you market to everyone? Let me explain. Give me a second. I hope you motherfuckers are taking notes, man. I'm really dropping jewels. Um, this is going to be really good for you. They're getting so many positive comments. Yeah, man, because they know that's because these motherfuckers are smart, man. They love the. I'm glad they're giving positive feedback about the the second uh, episode of the week. So. Oh, nice. Good for them. I knew they were smart. It wasn't as dumb as their bank account suggests. We're gonna change that. All right, all right. So, your product may work for everyone. It really might. But can you market it to everyone? For example, armpits are pretty much the same between genders. However, if you look at this deodorant, who is this marketed towards? Let's look at it. Who's that marketed towards can you, when you look at it? All right. Well, let's look at this one. Can you zoom in or you got to keep it like that? No, I don't think I can do it with it. You can do it, like? yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. All right, let's go here. Who do you think this is marketed for? <laughs> the Kraken, Old Spice Kraken. <laughs> Who do you think that's marketed towards? Right, probably men. Or let's go. This one might be easier to, to see. Right, who's this marketed towards? The fuck, I'm trying to get this one. Without me telling you, or you, I mean, you know, right? But who's that marketed towards, right? Probably guys. What about this one? Who's this one marketed towards? Right. Without even reading the words, you can kind of look at the font and tell that it's marketed towards women, right? Armpits are the fucking same. <laughs> I can use, armpits are the same, but you can't market it. Here's the thing. This powder fresh. It smells just like this fresh. It's not the, even the smells the same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just you. It's difficult to market one product to another product. It's different to market the same way to different segments of the population, right? And you don't even have to. Let's think about tampons, right? They don't give a fuck what I think. You're Judging from my YouTube analytics, you're probably a young man watching this. They don't care what you think. They only care about what women think. All right, so they've already they've already eliminated half the population. But is it all women? No. It's not baby girls, teenagers, right? It's adult women. Is it all adult women? No, it's not old chicks. It's not like just going through menopause. It's a, it's, they keep cutting down the segment of the population they market to, and they only market to them. They don't care what anyone else thinks, and they make millions. No, billions. This is super important that you find your target market and only market to them. So how I use that in my business, when I first started my online fitness business, I only marketed to young men. I only cared about young men. Pause. Men around the age 18 to 25, that was my target demographic, right? And the marketing would have been is a lot different than if I would have marketed it to women. If I would have marketed fitness biz, fitness stuff to women, um, the marketing was the marketing was a lot different. Marketing only to women, 
I'm sorry, the marketing was a lot different when I was marketing only to men than if I would have marketed only to women, right? And if I would have tried to market to both, the marketing would have been weak. For example, if you want to do a deodorant to both genders, I mean, what color are you going to use? That's a, I mean, that's a serious question. What color are you going to use? What font are you going to use? Look at the font. Like, <laughs> this is clearly for men. <laughs> this one with a fucking bear taking a bite out of it. I don't think no woman would, would buy that. But me, I'm intrigued. This is exactly for me, right? Or this one right here. Like, yo, this is clearly for women. Even the cut, look at the colors, look at the font. The shit is baby blue, right? Secret. Mm. You know, women like mysteries. They like mysterious guys, serial killers, and shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I once I was I was once I was in college and uh my homeboy's girlfriend Brooke she was trying to give me like dating advice because I was single at the time she said Brandon girls like guys who are mysterious and I was like what the fuck do I need to start walking around this motherfucker with a cape do I need to start do I need to start standing on the rooftop <laughs> overlooking the campus <laughs> anyway yeah, secret. They know that. See, these motherfuckers do that shit. The girls like mystery. Anyway, right? Guys like what? Action. That's why this shit called pure sport. Fucking <laughs> timber. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a difference. Right? And you can see this even in the fitness industry. You could, yeah, don't, don't put it on this yet. I want to show you something. Um, oh. Hold on. For example, there's a supplement line called Women's Best, and they sell protein. Well, what's the difference between women protein and men protein? Fucking nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. Whey protein is whey protein. <laughs> it's just this shit is pink and got a little heart on it. So women will see that and say, oh, this is for me. It's speaking to me. Right, but it's the fucking same. It's literally the same, just a different fucking label pack packaged on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's no difference, right? But they make a lot of. They made a. This company made a lot of money by segmenting that market and speaking to them, right? So how do you do that for your business? Well, when I when I talk to the people who are, who I coach in business, I say first you need to figure out who your niche is. I don't want to use that color. You want to figure out who your niche is, right? When I say niche, we're thinking who you want to market to? What? What problem do you want to help them solve? And how are you going to help them solve that problem? Pay close attention, right? So when I was doing my, when I, when I had my online fitness business, I focused on Men, boom, age 18 to 25, boom. But it wasn't all men age 18 to 25. It was men who wanted to what? Get ripped. And I use their language. That's important. I use their language. As a trainer, I would hate when people say that because I, I knew they wanted to be muscular with low body fat, but I'm using their language, get ripped. Because they weren't trainers, so I didn't want to use fucking jargon. Right. And if I said muscular with low body fat, I might have only appealed to trainers. Right. I use get ripped specifically. So it would be for people who didn't know shit about training. Because <laughs> the motherfuckers, if I start speaking trainer language, then only trainers would know what the fuck I'm talking about. Right. So who, guys who wanted to get ripped and how did I help them do that? It was a few different ways throughout the years. I changed it, but. I landed on it. the most profitable was when I when I when I went keto. I used a different uh, version of keto, um, the ketogenic diet and bodybuilding. All right. Now let me show you why this is so powerful. Let me show you why this is so fucking powerful. Because people they say this all the time. This is what I tell my students who I teach how to build their online fitness business. They say it's so crowded. There's so many people. There's so much competition. Well, yeah. If you're just a trainer, if you're just a fitness guy or fitness girl, but when you do what I'm about to show you, you'll be able to specialize, right? So think about how many trainers there are. 
online. How many trainers do you think there are online? All trainers. I mean, there's fucking millions. Like, I know that for a fact, right? So I said, fuck that. I don't want to compete with all these trainers. I'm only going to focus on, remember, I'm only going to focus on men. Right? So that... Segment of men. Hold up. That's eight, just men age 18 to 25. Oh, so that's a small segment. All right. But then it's only men who wanted to get ripped. So that means I wasn't focused on guys who wanted to be professional athletes, even though I have trained professional athletes. I've trained guys in the NFL. I knew how to do it. I knew how to train women. I trained old people. I trained young people. I trained old ladies, you know? When I used to work in the gym, but I was only going to, I couldn't market to all those people. I knew that, right? So only men wanted to get ripped. No professional athletes. I didn't care if you wanted to be a pro bodybuilder. I didn't care if you wanted to be a power lifter. I didn't even give a fuck if you wanted to be healthy, right? It was just guys who wanted to get ripped, right? Boom. So that's a very, that's a even smaller segment of the population. All right. Oh, shit. That was the wrong one. What the fuck? Okay. Then. It wasn't even all them. It was guys who were wanting to do it with ketogenic diet and bodybuilding. <laughs> super small segment. So now, now it's a super small segment of the population I'm marketing towards. Let me put that in a different color. Super small segment of the population I'm marketing towards. Here's the thing. Who's my competition now? Who's my competition? Right? How many trainers, even today, only focus on helping men age 18 to 25 who want to get ripped with the ketogenic diet and bodybuilding workouts. I dare you to name five. Right? You can't, right? Because that I made myself special, right? And now when this person finds me, it's like I'm only talking to him and he's excited because everyone else is just saying, I hope you build muscle and lose fat, right? But I'm saying, no, no, no I'm going to help you get ripped, with keto and bodybuilding, right? So, like, I'm speaking directly to them, right? Even though I can help anyone, I'm speaking directly to them. Just like this fucking protein will work for any human, man, woman, fucking she males. It don't matter, right? It don't matter. And fucking animals. <laughs> you get this shit. You get this shit. The fucking reptiles. Like, it doesn't matter. If protein is protein. <laughs> fucking all all mammals reptiles it don't matter right but they only marketing towards women and that's why they made so much money because they would only per there was only supplement line at the time speaking directly to one target market right and but it goes a little deeper than that too right you got to go Remember, it goes deeper than that, because remember what I said in number one, you got to appeal to their emotions and you can't talk about the features. You got to talk about the benefits and to talk about the benefits. It's the benefits that this guy is going to care about. Your target market is going to care about not all the benefits, only the benefits that your target market is going to care about. Well, what do they care about? Let's look for this example for what I use when I built my seven figure fitness business. Why does this guy want to get ripped? Why does that why why on earth would a man age 18 to 25 want to get ripped? Did anybody think of it? That's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> girls, man. <laughs> he wants the girls, you know what I'm saying? That's the only reason. He don't care about healthy. He don't care if he live or die. All he cares about is getting these girls. A guy this age, that's all he cares about. Right? So my marketing was kind of centered around that. And that's why, and let me show you what that looks like. Let me bring up one of my old YouTube videos. Maybe it won't. Maybe I won't because my girlfriend I get. You know what? She's she's mature. She can handle this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
<laughs> so if we go back years, years, long, long time ago, like like fucking eight, nine years ago, like, you know, uh, <laughs> we go back to some of, some of my most popular videos, right? Fucking page one is it's a fucking booty on the screen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's fucking ass. <laughs> more more girls that I'm gonna guys click on it. And even in the videos, we always make sure there was a girl working out, even though I knew there was no fucking girls watching this shit. <laughs> like I knew for a fact that there was no girls watching these videos. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we made sure that there was women in the videos for the guys. For example. The girls she's over here. Gonna go side to side. It was back in the day, she's working out, crying. This chick over here doing her thing. But we made sure there was girls in the video. But that was just for marketing. I knew there was no girls watching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? And it was that was the, kind of like the subtext of everything, you know? Boom. Now, here's the thing. If you switch these things up, the why changes. This is why you can't market everything to everyone. Because if you switch this shit up, the why changes. Let's say, let's say we just switch one thing. Let's say we switch just the age. Let's say we take it 30 to 40. Ah, if we start talking about that demographic, then it, and let's say it's the same thing, the same goal. They want to get ripped. Why they, they might want to do it. Oh, you know what I'm saying? He might, this guy actually might want to live longer. Right, guys in their thirties and forties, they might start thinking about longevity. They might start thinking about being alive for their kids or setting the example for their children. They might start thinking about their family. In fact, you know what I'm saying. So it it changes, and then if we change it to women, it's, it's I mean it, it changes no matter who you. Every time you start changing the 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 demographic, the why changes, and this is why you can't market everything to everyone. You get what I'm saying. A great example of this in business is a huge mistake that uh, General Motors made. General Motors, they make Cadillacs. Cadillac was a luxury, is a luxury brand, luxury car. And it never quite recovered from this. They were always known as one of the, the best American made luxury cars. And then in the 90s, they came out with a version of the Cadillac called the Katera. And it was a cheap version of the Cadillac. It was like $20,000 or some shit. Here's what happened. All the Cadillac sales plummeted after that, right? Because no, even the poor people didn't want the fucking cheap Cadillac. And then the fucking people who could afford Cadillacs didn't want Cadillacs no more because they were making cheap shit. I'm not buying the same shit the fucking broke boys can buy. <laughs> if a fucking broke boy can get the Cadillac, I don't want it, right? And their market share plummeted and they had to discontinue the Katera and they didn't start... To recover until they came out with the Escalade, and that kind of saved the company. But it was a huge mistake, and this is why you see other car companies like Le you see other car companies like Toyota when they want to put out a luxury car, they change the whole fucking name of the company. Right? It's called Lexus. Lexuses are expensive Toyotas, but if they just made it Toyotas expensive without changing the whole name and branding. No, nobody's going to buy a fucking expensive Toyota, right? And no one wants a cheap Lexus. <laughs> you know, they had to change the actual whole brand. Mercedes did the same thing when they came out with Maybach, right? Nobody wants a fucking $3,000 Mercedes, but they'll take a Maybach. <laughs> it's, it's actually the same company, right? But they just, it's like a whole different division. They marketed it different. That's how you have to do it, right? Because you can't be everything to everyone. You know, if someone who's buying a three thousand dollar car, I mean, someone who's buying a three hundred thousand dollar car, his why is different than someone who is buying a fucking fifty, sixty thousand dollar car. They're just different goals, right? Hope that makes sense. Then the third one, the third one. There is one thing. That people will always pay. There's one thing that people will always pay the most money for. I'm going to tell you what that is in a minute, but, but first I have to explain something. Right? So there's basically four categories 
of products. Almost every product or service will fit into one of these categories, right? And Expensive stuff. And then you have inexpensive stuff, right? This is the X, Y axis, right? Now, if something is kind of inexpensive, right? And the people don't need it, they just want it. You can classify that as, hold on, let me read it down. You can classify. No worries, uh, guys. Uh, t today our internet is a little bit unstable, but it recovers in case it's frozen. Just bear with us. Yeah, don't even trip, man. Just yeah. chill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if something is inexpensive and people just want it, right? And it's inexpensive, that can be classified as a trinket. These are sh things like your fucking fidget spinners, your fidget spinners. Fucking keychains, you know. Um, I remember people were buying those like little hoverboard things back a few years ago, right? Fucking trinkets, right? Then you have, then you might have something that people need, but it's relatively inexpensive. That is a commodity. Oh fuck! Hold on. That is a commodity, right? Then you have stuff that people need that's really, that, that's, that's actually, right? This is a necessity. Right? Then you have this category, things that people don't need, they just want them, and they're super expensive. These are luxuries right so why the hell would somebody pay for something that they don't need and but it's kind of cheap what makes somebody buy that right impulse these are bought off impulse right when you see people say man i made all this money drop shipping right they're selling trinkets right they're selling Chinese bullshit to old people on the internet. And like some old lady says, oh, yeah, I need the fucking hair dryer. And then she buys it just off impulse. That's what you're help hoping happens with your ads until your ad account is banned <laughs> because this shit took fucking seven weeks to fly from China to Missouri. All right. <laughs> then then. There's a commodity, right? These are things, again, these are things that people, they, they, they need them and they're inexpensive. Why do people buy these? Well, people are going to buy this off of price. For the most part, right? These are generalizations, right? Everyone needs toothpaste, right? These are commodities, toothpaste, toilet paper, um, condoms, shit like that. I don't know the difference between Crest and Colgate. I don't even know which toothpaste I'm using. <laughs> I just fucking buy whichever one. Hey, this is two for one. That looks like a good deal. I just buy it. All right. I don't even know if it's Crest or Colgate. It might be both in there. I don't know. Right. I just who gives a who gives a fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These are commodities is usually bought off price. Right. Then there's things like that are expensive and you need them. Right. These are things like homes. Right. You need a home. Right. You need, uh, depending on where you live in, in America, you may need a car, uh, some some health. If you have a health problem, doctors say you need a bacchiology. Your back's all fucked up. You need a bacchiotomy, right? You're gonna you're just gonna do it. You're just gonna get a bacchi a bacchiotomy, right? So these are based off needs, right? Ah, but then why the hell would somebody pay for something expensive? They they don't even need. They just want it. Right. These are things like 
Richard Millet watches. You know what I'm saying? Cartier bracelets. You know, instead of just getting a regular apartment, I got a penthouse. You know, <laughs> why would someone do that? You guessed it. You guessed it. This is status. If you can appeal to someone's status, they will always pay more and it's an easier sale. And it's an easier sale. How do I know this? Let me give, well, let me give you an example. I don't know if I want to give this example. I'm, it's going to make some people mad. <laughs> All right, here's an example. I always had an Android phone just because I thought that they were superior, especially Samsung. I feel like the photos were just way better than, than the Android than the iPhones. And I had an iPhone too just for work, but my, my main phone was a, a Samsung Note. I really liked the phone. I had the little the little fucking stylus that they won't put on the iPhone, right? But they'll put it on the iPad. Scammers. You know what I'm saying? This shit will work fine on the iPhone, but they didn't want to give it to you. Cool. So I had that on my note. I I, I was able, I, I had more storage. It was, it was an amazing device. I really liked it. And I remember when I first met my girlfriend back when we were just friends. <laughs> you know where this is going. The first text, she said, uh, she saw that green text. She said, uh, Ugh, nigga, you got an Android? And then we didn't even, you know, I think that's how we ended up being just friends. Initially, <laughs> like that might have had something to do with that. Because <laughs> we ended up just being friends for two years until I fucking, um, oh, you know what happened? It was during the C-19, New York City was closed, like closed, closed. But I still needed to see my son. So I bought an electronic scooter. And I, I drove that shit from Manhattan to Queens. <laughs> I'm on the fucking bridge. I'm on the Queensboro Bridge <laughs> in a fucking electric scooter standing. <laughs> and I had my, my 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 Android phone on the top of the thing, like a, doing the GPS. Then I hit one of them fucking potholes and went boom. And that shit flew off. <laughs> that shit still might be on Queens Boulevard or something. And uh, and and it was just gone. <laughs> and that's when I switched to iPhone. <laughs> now you know, what I'm saying we live together, right? <laughs> but it's status. It's stat like status. You know, like the at, at the status will make you make different decisions, man. <laughs> My fucking Apple Watch is way more functional <laughs> than this Richard Millet. This shit don't. This shit don't know my heart rate now. <laughs> this shit don't. This shit don't do nothing but tell time. But it does one thing that the I, Apple Watch doesn't. It flexes on the haters. <laughs> it stunts on the hoes. Flexes on the haters. <laughs> <laughs> so I paid two hundred thousand dollars for it instead of two hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because <laughs> of status that's why everyone does everything and if you're thinking right now i'm not moved by status the fact that you even have to say it if you said it out loud that is status like these guys who say man i just i just live real basic and they brag about it. usually these guys minimalism that's status too they're bragging about being minimalist minimalist right all right they're playing that status game or you see like fucking vegans you ever met a vegan <laughs> you ever met a vegan? Well, one thing you know about vegans is they're they're super excited to tell you about it. <laughs> they can't they can't wait to tell you all about it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Why? Because it's a status game. No one gives a fuck if you eat animals or plants. No one cares if you live or die, bitch. We don't even know you, right? But they want to tell everyone that they're a vegan, right? They want they want to wave that flag because that's a status game. Right. If your fucking basketball team wins, you're like, we won. Like, motherfucker, no, motherfucker. No, motherfucker. They don't even know you. Right. And if you go, we lost. No, motherfucker. <laughs> they lost. They don't know you. And they wouldn't like you if they did know you. 
you the type of motherfucker to cry over gay. <laughs> it's all a status game. Right? Every status is status make status really influences behavior, right? So you even if you have a commodity, you can attach status to it, right? So with trinkets, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll have like limited qualities, quantities of it, right? They won't make as many. Then they can actually charge more because now it's status. Oh, how'd you get one of those, right? It's the, 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 the scarcity creates status and now they can charge more for it, right? It's just basic supply and demand, right? Then with the commodity, instead of competing on price, you have to find a way to attach status to it. One way I saw this done was uh, with the first time I bought an electric toothbrush, right? Um, something started happening in like, you know, the late 2000s where it, I don't know if dentists were getting bottle girls or something <laughs> to work during the day, but there was like a lot of hot Spanish chicks working at fucking dentist office. So I had one of these chicks cleaning my teeth and then they brought another one in and they started selling me on this fucking $200 toothbrush and shit. I wanted <laughs> decisions you make are based off the emotions you feel time. You make the decision, right? I'm, she's cleaning my teeth with a goddamn Dominican titty on the side of my head. <laughs> this is a true story. And they brought out that 200 dollars for Yeah, let me get two of those. I think I need two of them, man. <laughs> and I bought a $200 toothbrush. Now, it was a fantastic toothbrush. <laughs> right. But like it was, it was the status of it, you know what I'm saying? At the time, you know. And then with necessities, right? Some like needs, like, yeah. You, I, I need to tell time, but I don't need a two hundred thousand dollar watch, right? You know what I'm saying? Like I need to fucking a place to live, but I don't need to live in a penthouse overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to see dolphins every day when I walk outside. Dolphins and manatees and other wildlife <laughs> every morning. But you know, this is it's luxurious. There's status attached to it to your to your area code, right? So, you know. They made another brand called Lexus. Charge more for it, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's super important. You know what I'm saying? So, like, if you, anytime you can attach status to your product or service, you'll be able to charge more and make more money. The way that worked for me in my business was, you know, we had, a, a, at one point, we did have a supplement line. And it was, they were really good supplements. But you can get good supplements anywhere. It's like it's hard to find bad ones, except for like C4. Uh, that's a bad one. Right? But like for the most part, this, if, if you know what you're looking for, you can find good supplements. And you can find ones that were cheaper than ours, that are the same quality. Right. But I attach status to it. So let me let me explain what I how I use all three of these with my supplement company. Give me a second. <laughs> All right, so we had I had a supplement line called Bro Laboratories. <laughs> yeah, I know it's just as crazy as it sounds, right? So first of all, let me just show you how how all these rules. First of all, who's who you think the target market is? Right. The pre-workout was called rebellion, <laughs> rebellion pre-workout. The fucking uh, amino acids were called fucking revolt. The coffee was called fighter fuel. Who, who you think I was marketing to guys or girls? Right. Look at the look at the uh, look at the packaging. Look at the font. Right. It was all it was all guys. Right. You know, it was, it was going towards guys. The fucking the flavor. Or right, we only had one flavor pre-workout. And that was intentional because it was cheaper. <laughs> if I just if I just had one flavor and just said it was the best, you know what I'm saying? No, 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 it's the best one. And um, we called it, I called it just uh 
Okay, I'm going to give you all a secret. <laughs> Flavor was called Poppin' Cherry. Remember, young guys, what do they want? <laughs> right? Poppin' Cherry, subliminal, right? It was not cherry flavor. <laughs> when we went to the manufacturers, the one that was the most, that tasted the best to me was the kiwi lark, it was the kiwi strawberry. But I couldn't think of a funny title for it. So I just started calling it pop. I just called it pop and cherry anyway, even though it was kiwi strawberry flavor. <laughs> Pop and cherry. I needed to call it Bob and cherry because that was funny to me. All right. And uh, <laughs> and it was, it was 100% towards God. Now, you can take it off this for a minute. I want to show you. By contrast, let's go. Woman's best had a pre-workout as well. Right. <laughs> Look at it. You know, see, it wasn't it wasn't called pop and cherry or busting nuts or no shit like that. Right. And it was <laughs> it wasn't draining balls. <laughs> right. You know, what I'm saying because they had a different why. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> it wasn't ball licking, uh, <laughs> ball licking banana. No, nah, it was just fucking regular flavors, right? Because you know they had a different why. And if you look, even if you look at the packaging, it's different, right? The packaging is different. The font, the every everything is different, right? Rebellion pre workout, right? So I was going straight to that person, but then it was attached to me as the influencer, right? You know, I was I was fucking famous and shit, you know. <laughs> so like you know, bro, like if you bought our, my my, it was status attached to it. Because I was an internet celebrity, you know, fitness influencer, right? It's the same reason Nike, you know, pays LeBron James so much money, right? Like those shoes aren't that much better than some other shoes, but they can charge more for it because it's attached to a person, right? And you get status by having the shoe, shoes that are attached to the person, just like you got status from having the bro lab shit. It was like, it was like a little mini cult. If you was down with bro labs, it was like, oh, and then if you had this shit, this shit wasn't in stores. It was in a few stores in New York, right? But it wasn't like nationwide in stores, right? And so if you had it, it was like, oh, you you got some shit that other people didn't have, right? So that it created like scarcity too, you know what I'm saying? And, and, a, and a little bit of mystique, right? So I, that's how I made it a luxury, but I also it was targeted directly towards... This is an ad. Kick everyone's ass. That's like a an ad <laughs> that we put out. <laughs> Fucking crazy people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, and yo, kick everyone's ass. <laughs> right? <laughs> like we didn't say shit about you don't even talking about what's in it, me being all sci scientific. No, no, just kick everyone's ass. You know what I'm saying? And then I said some some I was saying, like fighter fuel. This was this shit was funny. Hold on. This was a really good coffee, actually. It was it was really good, right? But uh, hold on. look look what I thought. I didn't say nothing that was in it. I just talked about what it do for you, right? Improve physical uh, endurance, right? Helps uh, mental clarity in a in a in a. <laughs> And efficiency, smooth, no crash energy, optimal performance. All I talked about was benefits, like I said before, right? You don't know what's in the shit, <laughs> but you want it. Now, there was some shit in there. Right? Like what we did was we added ginseng to it, and I used the lightest roast available. Actually, it took me a long time to come out with this. This was a good product, right? It was uh, we used the lightest roast available because the lighter the roast, the more caffeine the coffee has. People think dark roast is no. It's the opposite. And instead of using uh, uh, Arabica beans, which is like what you'll get from most uh, coffee shops or most stores, Arabica beans, we use what's called <laughs> Robusto beans. And they don't taste as good. <laughs> That's why you never see them anywhere, right? Uh, but this is what, but if you go to like, um, truck stops, that's what they're drinking. They want the strongest shit so these motherfuckers don't fall asleep on I-95. And have a fucking 18 car pile up. They need to stay up all night. They drink Robusto coffee because it has more caffeine. So we did that. And they had more caffeine. And then we added ginseng to it. 
we added ginsengs for some extra energy, right? But you know, I could I could have said all that, right? But those were fucking features. All people care about was the benefits. And this shit was we sold this shit. We could not keep this shit in stock. We could not keep the shit in stock. And I sold the shit. I mean, I sold the shit for twice as much as a regular bag of coffee, right? Because of the things I, I'm telling you now, right? The only reason I shut the supplement some company down because I started another business that was just honestly way more profitable. <laughs> and <laughs> and this, it, it wasn't really a sellable business at the time because it was so... I mean, we did have like a little mini exit, you know what I'm saying? But it was so attached to me that it wasn't going to work without me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and that was... And then I'll... And that kind of leads me to the bonus tip I'm going to give you. You still got to have a good product. You can do all this shit, but you you can't sell bullshit. Because if you get good at the marketing, but your product is bad, then it just shows more people how much you suck. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, you got to have a good product as well. Right? You can do all these marketing tricks and tactics. Uh, but if and, and if you have a good product, if you're actually giving people value for the currency they're exchanging for it, then it's a win-win. Right, everybody wins, but if you try to sell some bullshit, it, it it won't work in the long run, and that's how you get people saying you're a scam, and uh, you're not going to be able to last ten years. You're not going to be able to last like decades in business, like me, if you're selling bullshit. You got to make sure it's a good, good product. Right? Hope you found that helpful. Those are some good business tips. <laughs> Those are some good business tips. You know what I'm saying? What you got? What did you guys learn? What you guys learn? What you guys learn? You say, do we have any super chats? We do. We actually have to address Blackjack. Oh, Blackjack. All right. Where, 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 where are you at, man? Right here. All right. Following up on the Facebook ads question from Tuesday that you were going to look into. Mm -hmm. Also, any good ideas for LLC write-offs? I'm hiring my girl as an employee to expense <laughs> openers like you do. Can you write off a car or condo in Miami? All right, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. History has proven that I am not the go-to guy for tax advice. <laughs> All right. So you definitely want to get a CPA for that. You know what I'm saying? And it would be difficult for me to tell you because shit is different in different regions, right? So you want to get somebody who's familiar with the tax laws where you're at. However, last week, no, no, it wasn't last week. It was Tuesday. Blackjack Mastery had a fucking question about... And it was how to run ads to his business. Now, Blackjack Mastery sells Blackjack shit. <laughs> right? The problem with selling Blackjack shit is you can't run ads to gambling. Right? You can't run ads to gambling on Facebook. However, what, we're, what I'm going to show you is a strategy that we used. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but I've, I've actually... I've, we used to have like a marketing company. We used to run ads and run businesses, kind of run ads for a, a lot of different businesses. And one of them was a dating coach, right? It was a dating coach. And you, could, you can't sell like pickup advice. I mean, you can't market pickup advice on fucking Facebook, right? You can't market pick, pick, uh, that kind of advice on pay, Facebook. So he had this pickup shit, right, that he wanted to sell. Right. He couldn't market it on Facebook. So what we did was we created what's called a lead magnet. A lead magnet. So it was like a, a ebook. Right. It was an ebook that we that we created that was about confidence. Like how to have more confidence, or like then there was other ones like how to be more alpha. You know, that alpha probably wouldn't work now. Right. But at the time it was working. Facebook didn't care if you could said alpha. So what we did was. We made sure we didn't even talk about pickup in this book, but we still said the thing that his target market wanted. So we knew what his target, his target market was kind of like we talked about earlier. Right. You say who you're marketing to, what what you're trying to sell them and how you're going to help them. But we knew what else their prop, what other problems they had. And a lot of these guys had problems with confidence. So we figured a guy who wanted more confident. Who wanted more confidence, probably, listen, a guy without confidence probably ain't got no bitches, right? That's a safe assumption. So 
we had a book on how to get confidence, how to be more alpha or dominant, you know, shit like that. Shit that was kind of like dog whistle shit to the person who was in the pickup, if that makes sense. Right. So what we did was we ran ad, we ran ads on Facebook and Instagram. To the lead magnet. Boom. The ad was to go to the lead magnet. All right. And then they would end up on an email list. <laughs> Fucking retarded. <laughs> they would end up on an email list. Right. And then they would get they would get they would get like automatic emails like they were set up to go you know every few days kind of indefinitely <laughs> like we had this email sequence that was like a fucking 100 days long you know and um and from To the pickup shit. It wouldn't Facebook wouldn't let us do this. Right? So we got around it. So instead of going for conversions, we went to leads to the thing that was that was compliant with Facebook. Right. And then once they got on the email list in exchange for the book, right? Boom. Then we tried to sell them. Then we then we sold them an email. And from the email, they would go to the to the sales page for this, right? Also, the book, even though it was helpful. It was also, it was also um, in there, you know, ways for them to buy the pickup shit from the ebook, like links in there so they can buy it from there. Hey, if you want more, if you want our co whole course on this, if you want more than just what's in the fucking free ebook, if you want some real help on this, man, then go ahead and pick up this, right? So you can do the same, you can do the same thing. I don't know what your lead magnet would be, right? That's, I, I don't know your... I don't know your demographic enough to, to, to make that for you, but you should know your customer, right? You should know your customer. So instead of doing this, right, you're going to do it with blackjack shit. Oh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. You're going to do it with blackjack gambling shit, right? And I don't know what the email, I don't know what the lead magnet is going to be, Right. But you, you it's got to be something that's compliant with Facebook. So you probably can't talk about gambling, but you got to figure maybe you just talk about how to win. Maybe. I don't know. I, listen, I don't want to give no advice. It's going to get your ad, ad account banned. But you got to give them something that your target market would want to learn that is compliant with Facebook. And, uh, and Instagram. And that's how you that's how you get around it, because you can't you probably can't go straight to the thing. Right, so you see, you just you, you advertise a free e ebook, right? Yeah, that that should work out really well for you. That's what if you have some something that's not Facebook com compliant. Uh, we we did that in the pickup industry for like guys we ran ads for who were like pickup artists and did so pickup coaching. We we ran that strategy all the time for them, and it worked really well. I don't know why I couldn't think of that on Tuesday, but that's exactly what we did for a few people who. Were named nameless because of NDAs that I have. All right, what what other target market we have? We have Kiwi. Mm -hmm. What hey, up, Brandon. Kiwi? Your mindset tips have really turned my life around this last year after a rough breakup, getting lazy, fat, etc. Making high five figs back then to pulling in multiple six figures. Come on, can't even. Shout out to you, bro. Come on, man. That's what's up, man. Listen, bitches will fuck your whole shit up, man. She broke this chick broke his heart, made him fat. <laughs> now, now look at him, man. You yo, you see, you take that fucking pain and funnel it towards your goals. That makes you invincible. It's a beautiful thing when you can do that, man. Shout out to Kiwi, man. And uh that's Canadian money. So I don't know what that is, man. You know what I'm saying? I think I can only spend that. Like 37. $37. I think we can only spend that shit at the fucking gay pride parade. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the only place you can spend Canadian. 
Very I'm nice. just fucking with you, Kiwi. <laughs> no, thank you so much, brother. We I'm have glad Mav. we're here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I keep asking, but I'm curious how you would tackle your 168 hours as a college business student. Would you still work 40 or 50 hours? I mean, I don't know, right? Like, cause I, I don't know how how much school is taking up your time, right? You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what your goals are with school, like if how how dedicated you are. When I was in college, I was like, oh, I don't care what my grades are as long as I pass, man. So if I got C's, it was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. You know, me, it was just like, oh, did I pass? Cool. Like, I didn't care what my GPA was in college, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry. All right. So what you should have done, <laughs> so what you're going to have to do is start using your, your calendar. So everybody can do this, right? Everybody who wants to squeeze more life out of their day, right? There are 168 hours in every week. Cool. Right? So you got to think about how much out, how much time do you work, right? If you're in school, how much time you're in school, Right. Boom. If you're not in school, then that's zero. Right. School, work. Sleep. How many hours a week do you sleep? Every You guys can do this at home. Right. How many hours a week on average do you work? How much? How many hours a, a week on average do you do you go to school? How many hours on week a week on average do you sleep? Right. How many hours a week on average? Are you with your family? How many hours a week on average do you work out? Right. And those are the only things a man has to do. Everything else is kind of optional. Now, when I say that, there's always some fucking dipshit who says, oh, I still got to eat, shower, and and wash clothes and stuff, man. I still cook. Listen, if you're spending fucking 40 hours a week <laughs> showering and <laughs> grooming you got you got problems right, that are beyond the scope of anything i can cover here right i'm not qualified to give you advice if you're spending 40 hours a week in the fucking bathroom bro all right <laughs> uh, these are the major things right that you have to do everything else is optional right now and if you have to commute, then add, hey, hey, asshole, if you got to commute, add that to your work time, dumbass. It's a part of work because you can't work unless you commute. I'm going to fuck one of y'all up one day talking that shit. Watch. Watch. Somebody's going to say some, some of that dumb shit to me in person, and I'm going to fuck him up. And then I'm going to be the bad guy because I fucked up someone who disagreed with me. Anyway. All right. So you want to add these things up, right? Add these things up and then see how many hours is left. See, I add, add these. Okay. Add these things up. Boom. Whatever they are. You can do this at home right now. Right now, Nick. Right. Add them up. And then. Oh, that's the wrong one. Add them up and then just subtract that from 186. And see how many hours you have left. Right. And then you if you're like most people who are running this exercise through with they uh, they always notice that they. Have a lot of extra time left because you guys are wasting it. You're not using your calendar. Right. I put everything in my calendar. I'm going to show you all. I'm not going to bring it up because I don't want you all looking at my shit like that. Uh, but I'm going to show you like a small version of it. Right. This, this is my calendar. <laughs> like I live out of this shit. I got like basically every hour accounted for. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not out here leaving white space on this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is tomorrow. It starts at 5 a.m., right? And then it goes, <laughs> it's like a few open spaces. There's only open space I have is from 
five to nine. But I know we're probably going to put that in there tomorrow. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to be with Shorty. You know what I'm saying? Me, Novia. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be doing something. something. We, it's going to be romance and adventure. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> From five to nine. <laughs> but then at nine, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like you gotta you gotta fucking plan your your weeks, your days, your months, right? This if your shit don't look like this, then you're not really serious about time management. All right. Don't I have a video on that on how to use this shit? Where what was that video called? We should you know what we should do. Listen to me. We should make like a like a database somewhere, like a fucking spreadsheet or something of like the topics I cover in the video. So we can like insert this shit. You know what I'm saying? Hey, motherfucker, watch this. I ain't talking. I ain't saying that shit. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll put that together so we can. And it could be like a living document. It's like every time somebody asks some shit like this, I can just throw them to the video. <laughs> but still give me the money. All right. Okay, well, congratulations. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah, but like start living in the account. Start planning your shit more. I'm, I'm sure you would, all of you guys, anybody watching this, if you do this exercise, I promise you, you will find that you are wasting a lot of time. You know what I'm saying? You are wasting a lot of time. And you know you are, right? I mean, listen, I ain't, you don't even have to do this to find out you're wasting a lot of time. Open up your phone. Go to screen time. See how much time you spend on, on certain apps. See how, see how many times you, you, you motherfuckers are on. The same motherfucker who's saying, oh, man, I still got to eat and work, man. This guy, blah, blah, blah. I got to commute. I got to shower. That same guy got fucking 50 hours a week on grinder or some shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wasting time. Wasting time. <laughs> right. Is there other, are there other super chats? Mav had a follow-up. Big Mav. We should have an action homework segment so we implement every podcast. Yeah. The most from the pod. Yeah. The only problem with that math is I kind of forget what I say right after I said it. <laughs> but we, but that is a good idea. Maybe we'll implement something like that. That is a good idea. We have Gabriel back. Big Gabe. Hey, Brandon. Como estas? Estas bien. Estoy. Psst, exactly. If you could beat the shit out of any Smash Brothers character in real life, in real life. who would it be? In real life. Look, all right, I got to think about this. It definitely ain't Samus. She got the guns. All right. And that bitch is like seven feet tall. Like, if you look, like, all right. It ain't Samus. <laughs> okay. Do I have a weapon? Right. Because some of them got weapons. That, I get, I get, okay. My character would have a weapon. My character. <laughs> if Samus can have a fucking rocket launcher multiple guns then i gotta be able to have a weapon and i choose <laughs> um okay no, no i think he meant with my bare hands probably not man honestly well uh, if i got a weapon i pick an ar-15 <laughs> then i think there's a few of them i can go against you know what i'm saying like the ones that are like human <laughs> you know what i'm saying i think snake is I got the best chance against Snake because he's like a real person. Everyone else is like a mythical creature, right? <laughs> Everyone else got like powers and shit, but Snake is just like a guy. And I think I think I think I got Snake. I think I got Snake because if he got guns, I got to be able to have guns too, right? I pick an AR for. I pick an AR. Yeah. So you're talking about like Ken and Ron. But they got powers. They're boxers. Nah. Oh, nah. They got powers. That ain't regular human shit. I'm telling you, Snake is like a regular guy with like weapons. Then we just playing Call of Duty. Basically. <laughs> Shout out to Ivan. Big Ivan. A hundred bucks because he donated twice. Mm, he said something though. Oh, you just wanted to show. He That's did. what's up. Yes. Yeah, so, hey, you know, you did the right thing, baby. <laughs> yeah, you did. 
King Kito, thank you for the baller mindset program. Just need to get my credit up past 720. Yeah, that's I'm what's in the up. Baller stage. Let's go. If you have it. I'm sorry, I, I was hitting those effects over what you said. What'd you say? Go ahead. Nah, you said something. I've tried a lot of programs over the years. This is the only one that I have seen that gives you a step-by-step -step blueprint. I know, time. right? <laughs> I know. I know. I, I I get it. It's like a like that's why I wanted to make it like step by step and actionable, right? I really wanted to spell it out. Here's what you need to do, asshole. Step by step, and that, and that shit is working. Yo, thank you so much, man. Listen, Baller Mindset course is free. All right, it's free, and the link is in the description, right? You should fucking download that shit. It's really it's really good. Like we spent months on that shit. It's super good. I'm super excited about it. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to share that with you. Yo, you know what I'm saying? Oh, listen again. And guys, thank you for your super chats. All your super chats. It's not It's not about me. All right. It's about our community. Right. Because once once you start, once you go through baller mindset, you're going to start making money like my man Ivan or the, the other guys who were saying they made money. Like, and it's pretty. And then once you start making money, you start fixing your muscle money, your mindset. These hoes are going to be all over you. They're going to be all over you. And you're going to need protection from them. And I'm not talking about condoms. Of course not. No condoms forever or whatever Black Panther was saying. <laughs> whatever the fuck they was yelling. <laughs> right? No condoms forever. I was like, damn, man. I mean, I feel it, but like, it's Disney. Anyway, um, <laughs> you'll need protection from the thoughts. This kind of protection. They're going to come in and try to ruin your life, man. You know what I'm saying? So all your super chats go towards that. Download Baller Mindset. It's free. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> YJTC. Educational stream with some comedy. Yeah, people laugh when I talk. Sometimes it's on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Lucas Bame. All right. He donated twice, a little impatient, mm. with the same question. Uh -huh. Brenda, I am on HTT. How about targeting the specific goal prob problem? Like losing belly fat for both genders. How are you gonna market it? Making a specific avatar. Yeah, listen, no, I like that you have a specific goal, but why women want to lose fat for a different reason than men want to lose fat, right? They have different and then targeting it is different. And also, also, if you show a testimonial, let's say you get a testimonial from a woman, you show it to a man, he won't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? He won't give a fuck because it's not speaking to him. You get what I'm saying? Like it, it's not only do you have to, you have to really break it down by age group too. Because even if you eat like an old lady, you help her lose fat. The why, the reason she wants to lose fat is different than the reason a young man wants to lose fat. Right? Or a, the reason an a old man wants to lose fat. You got, you can't even... You can't even have the same gender with different age groups because the reason an old man wants to do it, the reason I wouldn't lose fat is different than the reason you want to look fat. I'm assuming you're young looking at your avatar, right? You know what I'm saying? You see you see a 40-year-old man take a picture like that. <laughs> it's midlife crisis shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> But you, it's cool. That's what you're supposed to do at, at your age, you know? Um, it's like, just shit is different. I'm telling you, you cannot do that. And it's like, I thought, I really thought that I explained it good when I did the pre-workouts. <laughs> like, with women's best protein, protein is protein, but they made so much more money by just marketing to women and speaking towards them. What's your logo going to be if you wanted to be man, men and women? Like, what's it going to be? What's your logo going to be? Right? What's your logo going to be? Right? Now, you can get only get away with that if you have, like, maybe billions of dollars like mcdonald's <laughs> like they can they can market to everyone because they can afford billboards and they can pay super bowl commercials and they can spend all the money to just hit everybody but even then even they they have money to market different if you watch bt i swear to god there will be a nigga rapping about big macs <laughs> it'll be a black man rap i've seen it i've seen a motherfucker <laughs> Super size, super size. I seen that commercial. It exists, but that they won't show that same commercial on Bravo, right? Bravo would be like a 
like a she male or something eating a Big Mac. I don't know, right? It's different, right? <laughs> it's different, and that, that's cool. It's fine. Like everybody, like, I wasn't saying it in a derogatory way. You too. I'm just being. I'm being. I'm actually being inclusive. Don't cancel me. I'm being inclusive. I just wanted to make sure that I was talking to everybody. That's all. I wasn't being derogatory. I was just trying to include different genders and species. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wanted. I ain't want no one to feel left out. That's all I was doing. YouTube, don't cancel me. I'm the most progressive. Uh, <laughs> No, but for real, like McDonald's has the fucking, they can do that, right? Like if you go, if you watch BT, you're going to see fucking black people eating McDonald's, <laughs> right? I swear to God, you will, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if you see, and when I'm, when I'm watching fucking shit, man, when I'm watching Paw Patrol on my son, I'm seeing kids eating McDonald's, like getting the Happy Meals and shit. You get what I'm saying? Like. You got to have a lot of even they are taught are changing their market to talk to the to the specific people, right? You ain't get that kind of money, Lucas. You just gave me four European dollars, man. That's like thirty cents. <laughs> and that's cool. That's where you're at, man. But you ain't got the money to. I'm telling you, you can't do that. And the most important part is because of the testimonials, right? Like, especially you're in HET. Okay, you're 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 one of my high ticket training students, and this is, you know, Lucas, this is the first, <laughs> this is like the fucking second video you watch when you join the program, right? But it, I get it. Everybody wants to listen. Here, here, do this, Lucas. Just do it the way I say it first. You start making some money, then you then then start remixing it after you get to 10k a month. Learn how to play the music before you fucking write the remix. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's not true. That's not true, Lucas. You said, go ahead, babe. Read it. Follow up. I feel like men's egos are holding them back from seeking for help. Women are willing to ask for help. And there are 70% of my clients. Oh, man. They are, they are in-person clients because you just started online, bro. Those are in-person clients. Okay, so it's like this. You just started marketing online, right? Right online, you can choose to market to anyone, right? You can choose to market to anyone. In person, you were kind of at the will of who was in your vicinity when you were in the gym. Who was in the gym? It's kind of like if I bake a cake and I put it outside, and a crackhead starts eating it, and then his crackhead buddies say, "Oh shit." Some, some fucking good some cake outside and they start eating the shit with their bare hands like fucking savages you know does that mean that i'm a fucking crackhead baker now like should i open i should open up a crackhead bakery man <laughs> you know what i'm saying crackheads love my shit man <laughs> nah man that's just who was there you know but if i like make a lucas cake <laughs> you know what i'm saying write your fucking name on it find your favorite flavor you know what i'm saying Get some, get the chick you got a crush on to be in the ads. <laughs> then you gonna buy that cake. It's got your name on it, Lucas. It was made for you, right? So it's it's like you've never, yeah, 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 yeah. And this, and I'm, I'm okay. Let me show you something, Lucas. You keep saying men are holding you back, right? Men are holding you back, but this is not true, man. All online. Oh, listen. Okay, you've been doing it for two years. I ain't seen you on the calls, man. I was there this morning. So, man. <laughs> I see you. I mean, Tuesday. I ain't seen you on the, but that, no, I believe you. Um, let me find. Uh, hold on. Let me find. Let me find this brother. Uh, cool. Hold on. I'm going to find something for you. Let me show you something, man. Wait a second. Hold up, hold up. So, you, I mean, Lucas, like you tried to tell me just now that the entire gender doesn't want you to.
But you know, okay, whatever. You know Corey Armstrong, right? You know Corey, right? From from ACT. Yo, Corey makes like twenty thousand dollars this year, this month. I'm sorry, twenty thousand dollars last month. He's been doing that like every month, and all his clients are men. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm I'm I'm, I'm just. I mean, you see the fucking. <laughs> that's the one. I don't. I don't think that's something I have to debate. You know, like you can do it, but it's like okay. If you and if you want to go with both genders, just know you're making it harder than you need to. Like, just pick one. Just pick women. Fuck it. If you if you feel like that's better for you, then just pick women and just go in there. Like, there's a lot of students who make money just marketing women. You know. Let's get to the next question. I've been on this too long. <laughs> Kiwi Lucas, hit us up in HTT Canada. though. In the, what's up? I'm sorry, what was Kiwi talking about? You said Lucas to hit you up in HTT? Yeah, hit us up in the group. Yeah, we got you. And to show up on the calls. Yeah, man, every Tuesday, baby. I'm on there every Tuesday. <laughs> Kiwi said he can't stand Canada and we'll be out of here in a few years. You're right, <laughs> though. Here's some more Rainbow Pride money. <laughs> Shout out to you. <laughs> Toronto's actually one of my favorite cities. Oh, it was one of my favorite cities. Mr. Crow <laughs> said he signed up and he hasn't received any email yet. Oh. Check your spam. Check your spam, man. Listen, if I had to guess who messed up, if it was the billion co dollar company that runs our, our CRM service. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but like it's probably in your spam, like or your that weird that weird promotions tab. You definitely got the email, 100 percent Ah. Man, we got, I don't have enough time to do the next segment. Because it's like, I, yo, yo, the, the, the other thing I wrote, I spent all day writing, it's like 20 steps. <laughs> <laughs> Unmute Yara. Somebody <laughs> asks, what is HTT? HTT is, my, is uh, where I teach people how to start their online fitness businesses. It's a high ticket trainer. And if they wanted to start their online business, where would they go? Oh, uh, man, they can holler at me. I mean, listen, I'm not really here to push that shit. But, you know, if you wanted to know more, listen, I don't even know. We don't listen. I don't even know. Right? Well, hit me up on Instagram if you're interested in uh, starting your online business. Yeah, my violence. TH, yeah. how to stay consistent. I'm 100% one day and 20% the next. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. That's most people. As most, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Yo, that's most people, man. You know, um, I really believe this is gonna be part of the present. I had another present, an additional presentation, but I spent too long yelling at people, and uh, <laughs> and I spent too long on the first one, you know. But um, listen, I think that the average person is 90 days from seeing like major changes. So I think it's like this. I, I look at it like this. I think after 90 days of consistency, this is with almost anything, 90 days, you'll see like huge improvement, right? But let's say you were consistent for a fucking thousand days. I think everybody is a thousand days from an entirely different life. Like everything, everything changes. There's money, finance. If you can be consistent at something for a thousand days, you can change your whole life, you know. But 90 days, you'll see, you can definitely see like real progress, like real pro like progress, you know. But if you can be consistent for a thousand days, you'll change your whole life. How do you do that? How do you do that? Well, it's one thing to say you're consistent, but nothing to do it, right? And I, I talked about this before. I'm gonna bring up one of my habit trackers. So I'm gonna bring up one for last year because the shit I'm working on now, I don't want y'all to see. Because of uh, you know, 48 laws of power, law number four, always. Okay, so check this out. <laughs> We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Uh, I'll do the other thing. All right. But anyway, so what I do is I track, I track the shit, right? Because it's not like if you are consistent or not, it's how consistent are you, 
You get what I'm saying? It's not binary. It's it's um it's a spectrum. You get what I'm saying? It's definitely a spec consistency is a spectrum. It's not binary, right? So for example, I I created this habit tracker in Notion, you know, boom. And this is from August of last year, just because I don't want y'all to see the new shit I'm working on because uh, you know, 48 laws of power, law number four always. So if you look at the workout, <laughs> like you look at the workout, bam. Oh, look at it. 86 days. Uh, that's pretty consistent. That's pretty consistent. Uh, if you look at, oh, they can't see it because the thing is covering it. Just move it for a second. So you can see. All right. Boom. All right, cool. So you look at the workout, boom. 86% of the days. Now, it's probably 100% if you count like these are just rest, like rest days, you know, everyone's on, right? But that's not bad for the month, right? Uh, AM meditation, 98%. PM meditation, oh, that needs work. So I know, I know what to work on next month. You get what I'm saying? Uh, tracking my macros, 100%. You know, I've been doing this for 10 years, so like I didn't, but I still, I still track it, right? At least seven hours of sleep. I did that 75% of the time, all right? That's something I can work on. Mint.com, um, I, I track my spending and in, I track all the money coming in and all the money coming out every day. And I categorize every expense just so I know, you know, I know. I mean, listen, it's like macros for your bank account. You know, calories in, calories out for your fitness. Fucking dollars in, dollars out <laughs> for your fucking finances, right? Um, and I, so I, I was on that uh, 98% of the time. That's pretty good, right? Flex pitch. I can't tell you what it is, but something makes me a lot of money. I did 84% of the time. Mmm, Spanish. Mmm. Mmm. Un piquito espanol, dos gates, tango leche para mesa, uh, un piquito ejercicio abdominales, abdominales, uh, pollo voy bicicleta mañana, right? So my, my Spanish is, is good, but, you know, it's not great. And you can see why. You can see why, you know uh studying I, I have to study every day you know i read that's how i read two books a week man i just schedule it work on content oh bam 88 percent. all right spend time with minovia all right oh man three point three and a half hours a day man, not bad right so like i just track this shit it's important right you got to have a tracking session and my my goal is to try to make every day a win you know what i'm saying and then always in and, and try to improve so next month is like okay Following month, I say, okay, I, I see where I can do better. I was pretty good at uh, almost everything, uh, except for uh, sleep was where my weak points. Sleep in Spanish were my weak points. You know what I'm saying on this, but you know, and you just keep making improvements. So consistency is not binary, and I think that's something that we need to um, understand. If you fuck up one day, like, okay, you fucked up, but you got to get back up. You got to get back up. You know what I'm saying? And and you got to track it. If you're not tracking, you're slacking. It's like I have no idea how you motherfuckers go through life not tracking shit. Like people think I'm crazy because I keep a scale on me and I track my macros every day, and I've been doing that for ten years. I think y'all crazy for putting anything in your mouth <laughs> like a whore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that just sounds fucking nuts to me, right? But it's cool. Like I, I mean, we all have different priorities, right? Like, oh man, I just want to be. Listen, I track my mood. I have a different app called iMood Journal, and it's like one of the only notifications to go over my phone. And I just track where, how, how, what my mood is every two hours. And then I get like a graph and I get data on this shit. You know what I'm saying? And mm, last week, it was an eight out of 10 all last week. Boom. That's, that's fucking good. You know, like people say they want to be happy. Well, like you got to, let me see the data. Like, how do you make this? I don't know how you motherfuckers are making decisions without data in your life. <laughs> like, I have no idea how you guys are doing it. You're not. That's why you're on the fucking internet now asking strangers for life advice. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start tracking. If, you not, if you're not tracking, you're slacking, bro. Start tracking the shit you want to be consistent on. And just... Try to make improvements every day. 
right? You didn't, okay, I fucked up yesterday. How do I get better tomorrow? Then every week, look at it and be like, you can look at this shit. Okay, where do I need to improve? Me, I can look at this that month and say, okay, this is what I need to do next month. This is how I need to get better. But you got to have data. <laughs> like, how, how do you make decisions without data? I don't know. It's fucking weird to me. That, but maybe that's just how my brain works, you know? But it seems to be working out pretty well for me. <laughs> Are there any other super duper chats? I'm just gonna we ride have one this out from Gabe. Big Gabe in the house. He's back. Thanks a bunch for the baller mindset course. I'm still going through it. Also, would you ever have Z on the podcast? Oh yeah, you know what, man? I ran into him the other day. He was like, yo, he was like, <laughs> he was like. Hey, hey, he like yelled and then he like ran, he like ran down on me, man. Like this motherfucker almost got sh- <laughs> then I realized who he was and then that he came in peace. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so then yeah, I hollered at him for a minute, man. You know what I'm saying? He's uh <laughs> I, I like him, man. I like I like what he's doing, you know. Um he's definitely entertaining. He's definitely entertaining. Yeah, I mean, we make we, I'm sure we can make that happen. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's tall, man. He's taller than me. He's like, motherfucker, looked like he was like seven feet or some shit. You know what I'm saying? And he started fucking, he ran down on me. I was like, <laughs> I didn't know what was she. <laughs> Luckily, everyone walked away safely. What else? <laughs> he came in peace. <laughs> we took a picture together and shit. <laughs> we have Efosa. Mm-hmm. Do you rather be rich in 93? I'll be broke in 2023. Why do you keep asking that? I feel like you asked that question before, and I don't know if I understand it. Nope. I don't never want to be broke nowhere. Give me rich in 93. Yeah, because I'll fucking, okay, sure, man. Like, rich in 93. Yeah, if I was rich in 93, and then I would have invested that money and then watched it compound, yeah, that'd be, who knows where I'd be right now? Who knows where I'd be right now? Like, fucking night, what was I doing in 93? Fucking... <laughs> Gang banging. <laughs> Running around with a bunch of guys who are dead or in jail now. <laughs> Listening to Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> yeah, I would have liked to be rich when the Wu Tang album dropped. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what else we got? We have clean. Uh-huh. Can you please re-explain the chi mm. strings in your yeah. pocket? Yeah. It was a game changer. It's a game changer. All right. Fire. It's a game changer. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Listen. All right. Listen. String cheese. We all love it. We all think it's delicious and nutritious. But you have to store cheese in the refrigerator. Right. So if you keep grab, if you grab the cheese right out the refrigerator and eat it, it's kind of like stiff. It's rigid. Doesn't taste as good. So what I do is, excuse me, I take some a few string cheeses, put them in my back pocket, go about my day for a little while, let them heat up, man, booty heat. <laughs> Let him heat it up, man. And then, mm, you know, 10, 15 minutes later, I've been warming up these, after I've been cooking these motherfuckers. <laughs> See, I tried the microwave. That, that, the, the microwave works okay if you're, in a, if, you're, if you're in a pinch, if you need them fast. But if you got some time, if you got some time, put them in your back pocket. Because the microwave is going to melt them a little bit, you know? Gonna be like melt. We're not trying to melt them. Just trying to heat them up just a little bit. <laughs> just get them a little bit, a little warm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> a little warm, right? And then, mm, then you, then you, then you take them out. Still got that booty heat on them. <laughs> then you open it, and you know, it just tastes a lot better, man. Because it's like the cheese has been melted perfectly. If you put it in the microwave, it's gonna be too much. Too way too much. She's gonna melt on the plate a little bit. Nah, man. Ninety. You want that shit? You want to heat that shit up? 
98 degrees. <laughs> that is the temperature of the human booty. <laughs> 98 degrees. It's delicious, man. You should always give it a shot. Because I don't want to eat a protein shake or I don't want a fucking keto bar. I want some natural. I want booty heated cheese. String cheese. You know what it is. <laughs> was that the last question? That last question? Hey, listen, guys. Yes, it was. We've been through a lot today. <laughs> we spent a lot of time together, man. Listen, if you haven't already, join the Victory Unit. Discord is free. We got free courses in there. So it's a, it's a whole team of like-minded soldiers on a mission to help each other build a money muscle mindset. I got free courses in there. I'm throwing some more free ones in. Um, some point, me and my homie Greg, we're gonna work on a, a course on selling options. You know, because that's uh, something that's been that's a income strategy that's, that's been very lucrative for me, and I think you guys will all benefit from it. Uh, but with just a lot, lot of stock advice in there, everything, and the baller mindset course. You gotta go through that, man. You gotta go through like a lot of. I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of questions y'all asked today <laughs> was answered in detail in the Baller Mindset course. You know, you definitely need to get in there, check that out, man. Um, oh, tell them about the fucking um, audio podcast, the audio shit. Yeah, so all the episodes that uh, I mean, we're we're going live twice a week now, and uh, all the episodes that we've had, like all the thirty-four episodes, all the segments have been turned into audio segments and are published on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, almost all of the existing uh, platforms that you can listen to audio podcasts on. Just search for the Vict- like just Victory Talk is going to show up and just have Brandon just uh, sharing wisdom with you. Yeah, I think there's another Victory Talk podcast, but I don't think it show up. That was a, I think that got just, it's it doesn't losers. show up. It's yeah. the, it, yo, it's the one with the cool ass black dude. <laughs> That's how you know it was, it was me. Yep. <laughs> Just make sure you write the review, provide feedback, and share it with others as well. Thank you. Guys. For sure, man. For sure. For sure. Hey, listen, man. It's been real, man. This is do y'all like the do y'all like the fucking Thursday podcast, man? Is it is that what, they, what were they saying about the Thursday podcast? We got some good numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's some cool, good man. feedback, some good interactions. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, guys, we're gonna see, we're gonna keep doing this every Thursday until like I don't know, indefinitely. Unless I decide I don't want to do it no more. But like <laughs> for the most part, we're gonna keep doing this, man. Um, I see y'all on Tuesday. Every Tuesday, this has been the victory talk. We do this every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Let's go.